Let's discuss this further with Dickie Arbiter. He is a former spokesperson for uh, Buckingham Palace. He joins us now from London. Uh, Dickie, great to have you on the show. Uh, let me ask you, did you get a chance to read any of the book? And I'm not talking about the juicy experts. I've read most of it, yes. Um, I've been unfortunately uh, not been able to get a copy until it arrived on my Kindle this, uh, earlier this evening, last night. So I have read quite a lot of it, and I find it incredible that he has come out with this. Here's somebody who has complained to the media about his privacy being invaded. He has sued the media because private papers have been published, and yet here he is doing just what the media are doing. So he's playing a bit of a double game, and it's all double standards. I'll get to that double game and, and double standards in just a bit, but I think many people out there could be saying, you know, uh, every family has their arguments, but putting it out there for the entire world to see, it's a different story altogether. I understand the fascination with the royal family, but why do you think that Prince Harry and his wife have embarked on this, not this campaign, but this prolonged campaign to tell their story and present themselves as victims? Well, you are absolutely right that every family has spats, but not every family airs their dirty laundry in public. Why he's doing this, I think that's a question that needs to be put to him. He claims that uh, his privacy is invaded. He claims that his, uh, his wife is being uh, uh, harassed. Um, he's, it's all about him. It's all about Meghan. It's all about his family, without even considering about the hurt he's, he's implying and... and putting on other people, namely his family and his friends. His friends have actually stood by him. They haven't countered any of the allegations in the book, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of these uh, allegations are countered by his friends because they are heartily fed up with him. Why he's doing it, it's a question that he needs to answer, and quite frankly, nobody has asked him that. Mm. Um, there have been a number of issues that uh, the royal family has had to deal with over the years. We all know that. I mean, as much as it didn't start under his watch, how do you think that uh, King Charles uh, will deal with this, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, public relations headache? Well, it is a bit of a public relations headache, but I think it's a public relations headache for the uh, Count and Countess of Montecito uh, rather than the uh, direct family here in London and in the United Kingdom. I think what they're doing at the moment is absolutely right, maintaining a dignified silence. Somebody asked me the other day, well, why doesn't William come out and say what exactly happened at Nottingham Cottage in the allegation that he pushed Harry over? The problem is with that is that as soon as you start coming out with uh, denials or putting the record straight, uh, even suggesting that it never actually happened, a, a reporter worth his while or her while will say, well, what did happen? And you open up a new dialogue. And that's a dialogue that will play exactly and rightly into the uh, Montecito camp, which I don't think the royal family want to do. So maintaining a dignified silence is really the only way to deal with this. Okay, Dickie, since you're talking about uh, denials and putting the record straight, uh, I am wondering, uh, and, and Sarah was just mentioning, I'm sure that you were, were, uh, listened on it as well, the book is half price. People aren't rushing to the bookstores to get it. What do you think this is going to do to his, his, his reputation, his image? Do you think that perhaps uh, the, the, the public opinion of him or the tide of it could be shifting? Well, the public opinion of him is shifting, certainly in the UK. It, it was uh, a few weeks ago up slightly over 60 percent. It's now down to slightly over 30 percent. And Meghan's is even lower. It's in the 20s. So people are heartily sick and tired of it. They don't like the idea of the, the royal family being hammered the way he is hammering them. It is all about him and his family. And I think the tide is turning in the United States as well, because they're getting a bit tired of it. Quite frankly, nobody would be the slightest bit interested, certainly in the United States, if they weren't the Duke and Duchess of, and he wasn't the son of the king. Yeah. Uh, if they were ordinary Mr. and Mrs. Sussex, they wouldn't really care one way or another. But I think the, uh, you know, as you put it, the, the sort of the great global public is uh, falling off the idea of, uh, of supporting him. They've seen so much in the newspapers. They're not going to buy the book because they've seen it all, as far as they're concerned. So I think the, the publishers are going to be left with one very big headache and one stockpile of books. Okay. Prince Harry's autobiography, Spare, has hit the, bo uh, the book stands. Dick Arbiter, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for joining us here on the News Hour.